Uh, welcome to the, the EMR team's uh, digital health checkup webinar series. So this is an ongoing series that uh, we've had taking place every month. Um, and each time we have uh, an expert presenter on a particular topic uh, discussing an aspect of healthcare uh, in the digital realm. Um, I'm Andrew Strang. I'm a team lead with the SMA EMR pro program. Um, I have a few of my colleagues here today with me. And um, I'm going to introduce our, our presenter, Dr. Sanderson, in just a second. Um, and at the end, I'll help facilitate any questions you might want to ask. Um, and then at the end, at the end, there will be a Q and A. Uh, and if you have questions that come up during the presentation, you can enter them into the chat. And the chat um, function should there should be a button at the lower right of your screen to enter uh, questions in the chat. Uh, you'll also see um, um, a microphone control somewhere near the bottom of your screen that says mute. Um, so just please. Uh, Keep in mind to keep yourself muted during the presentation. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll just talk about, briefly about the, this, this session today. The, today's topic is CDMQIP best, best practices in a curo. And um, I just want to mention also that we had a med access uh, CDMQIP best practices session planned for tomorrow, which has been postponed. Uh, and we'll hopefully be posting the new date shortly. Um, so today we're we're lucky to have Dr. S Dr. Christy Sanderson with us. Um, she's presenting uh, this session. She's from the UK originally and uh, has been a family physician in Moose Jaw for 12 years, operating a group practice with two other family physicians. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that Dr. Sanderson will be using what we call an EMR sandbox in presenting this session, which means that the data she'll be presenting in the EMR is it's stand-in data that it only exists within a test environment that is not uh, an actual clinic EMR. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand it over to Dr. Sanderson. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for inviting me uh, to do this. Um, this uh, I've, I've been using a Curo since 2009, so quite a number of years, uh, probably the first wave to uh, get started on the EMRs. Um, and then the CDM um, uh, workflow sheets that are populated into the Acuro um, have been extremely helpful to me uh, with regards to um, doing the full CDM, maybe saving a little bit of time in the office, making things a lot uh, simpler than filling on those old forms we used to do, or even just free typing everything in that you're expected to do to um, uh, achieve your CDM uh, payment as well, if you're fee for service. So um, hopefully you can see the screen in front, and uh, I'm assuming if you're joining this WebEx that you're somewhat familiar with Acuro, but I won't assume that you're all experts. Uh, you, there may be some novices out there as well who may not have had Acuro for quite so long a time. So um, with regards to doing the um, CDM flow sheet, what I'll start with showing, and hopefully you can see my uh, mouse cursor moving around is, the most important thing to have at the, uh, in your um, front uh, encounter notes is the correct code and diagnosis for diabetes. We're, we're gonna use a diabetic flow sheet today. So um, as you may be aware, when you add things, you just press the add green button. I happen to know the code off the top of my head, but if you just type in uh, diabetes uh, and search, um, it will show you this ICD-9 code of 250. Um, this absolutely needs to be entered um, into your, into your uh, EMR. Uh, you just hit select to add it. And then you can change at the top of the page here. You can on the onset date, change the date of onset if you wish. Um, you can leave it blank if you wish. I'll just leave today's date for now. I'll just we click OK. Then you will see here at the, under the history of problems now, we have the, the code in there. We've already populated some fairly common medications in diabetes in the active medication list, and you'll see how that becomes important when I open the flow sheet up and how helpful it is to have this up to date and your medications up to date uh, here because that helps uh, with populating the flow sheet as well. Another additional thing that's worth having already entered into the system uh, before you open your flow sheet up uh, to auto populate is the lifestyle, which is uh, the smoking um, habits of your patient. Uh, and that's found under the lifestyle here, halfway down on the right hand side. To add in their smoking status, you would click the green plus box. And if you scroll down to smoking here, 
Um, you can add it yourself in free type, but to get this to auto populate uh, into the CDM flow sheet, you need to use the highlighted one here, the smoking status QIP. Um, so if you highlight that and then underneath you go to the details box, which is a drop down box here. And here you've got a list of options. So let's assume our patient um, is a smoker. So we'll we'll put we'll highlight the smoker with no plans to quit as our option. You can put dates in here as well as when they started and ended smoking. I I generally leave that blank. Uh, and then we'll hit uh, save and close. And then where my mouse is here, hopefully you can see there we have the current smoking status uh, under the lifestyle box. So we're pretty much ready to go uh, now to open up the flow sheet. Um, if you have a look down at the bottom half of your screen in the middle here under labs, um, there are some pre-populated things that we've already put in. Uh, so an A1C, uh, cholesterol, uh, urinary um, results, and obviously the blood pressure here. Looks like we've got diastolic and systolic the wrong way around, but not to worry, we all know, we all know what that means. Um, so these, um, if you're adding blood pressure in, you can do it directly through the flow sheet or you can do it uh, yourself or have a member of staff do it and add it um, here when we're adding in at the bottom here, you can add blood pressure man there and add that in. That's how this one has been entered. Um, I'll just close that for a second. So if that's already entered, you will see how easily that then auto populates also into your um, CDM flow sheet. Uh, I, if you're using a Cura, then I'm assuming most of you will be receiving uh, labs through the link uh, process directly into the patient's uh, computer. So you don't have to manually add these numbers in. Uh, and that again will also uh, auto populate uh, into the CDM. So hopefully not going too fast for anybody, I hope. Quick reminder, make sure you have your um, diagnostic code in correctly. Good idea to make sure your medic active medication screen is up to date uh, and your smoking status. Always add it through the, the QI, uh, uh, the quip heading. Uh, so let's go to actually opening up the flow sheet. So as most of you are using a curial know, you up, up at the top here, when you're going to add your notes, you probably use the left hand side to uh, free type hand notes and things. Um, looking on the right hand side where most people have their forms, the um, CDM is usually sitting at the bottom somewhere. Here we go, under CDM forms here. So um, once you've found that, highlighted it, you can. Excuse Excuse me, sorry, Dr. Sanderson, if you just scroll down further, you'll get to the QIP ones. That's the old HQC should be hidden. Oh, right. Okay. I thought they were usually at the bottom. Yes, there we go. So Good. my mistake. There you go. Yeah. So right at the bottom where I thought they were, thank you, uh, Nicole, they are under the CDM worksheets here. So um, as you can see, there are some that are purely for coronary artery disease. There is a joint one for diabetes and coronary artery disease. Uh, and um, a heart failure and COPD. We're just going to use the diabetes one today, but they're um, they're all very similar and pretty straightforward. So if you open this uh, up, so we open that box up. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm my face is right over the top of some of this stuff. I'm not sure whether that would appear to everybody else. That way, so I'm just gonna. We're seeing the work worksheet just fine, Dr. Sanderson. Okay, perfect. I can see it now myself. Okay, so um, here's a worksheet at the top, of course, we've got the details of the patient. The place to start the date of service today, of course, is to first of all, hit this key, but this C re select recent values. At the moment, you'll see all this is empty and you'll see some big red highlighted boxes here. These are the ones that are the sort of minimum things you have to have um, entered to get the full um, sort of um, reimbursement for doing your uh, CDM. Um, but some of this you're going to find, well, you don't have to start manually typing in. If you just hit this button here at the top that's highlighted, select recent values, just click on that. And automatically you'll see a change. And now all those red boxes have disappeared. And here we have already 
auto-populated the A1C. For some reason, it's showing the LDL. Okay. I'll just have to change that to A1C. Now, this will normally automatically just show the A1C when you get your labs down through the link uh, system. So I'm not quite sure why that is. I think it's because we've added it manually. Um, so um, as we work down the flow sheet, you'll see various places where things have been auto-populated, which saves you a huge amount of time entering data. Um, so the blood pressure, the weight, the height, um, the A1C, the lipids, the urinary microalbuminuria, if it's been done, um, et cetera. There's gonna, as we go down the um, flow sheet, you will see auto-population, uh, things auto-populated there. So right away, we've got the information in the flow sheet that some, used to take uh, quite a large amount of transcribing time up. Um, and I uh, will just gradually go through this flow sheet with you. It's pretty straightforward, so I won't take too much time in the in the small minutiae of it. But um, you'll see scattered through the flow sheet uh, an add comment box. That's for free time. So for example, subjective note, this is really sort of you know, what I do is my introduction, how you how the patient is feeling, any current concerns, and I would open that box up and may type a few things in there uh, and uh, uh, enter that. So that would be, you can use that for whatever you think it's appropriate. Um, moving down the flow sheet, uh, we have date of diagnosis. Well, it's auto-populated that. If you hadn't put the code in at the beginning when I showed you how to add diabetes as a uh, um, diagnosis, that would be blank and empty. You can add it at this point, but if it's already done, then that will automatically auto-populate each time you open up this flow sheet every three months. Uh, diabetes type, you can click whatever your, and then your goal, of course, as that varies from a uh, person's age maybe and life expectancy, you can put in what you feel is your appropriate A1C yourself here. These are very, quick to add. Um, A1C is already auto-populated. Glycemic therapy, this is obviously where we add. As you see from my test patient, he was, she was on metformin, so let's tick that. Um, not currently on insulin therapy. And then you have the options of discussing, uh, we're down to glycemic control, the blood glucose records, these uh, you'll see scattered throughout these information buttons as well, which is really helpful um, information if you're not quite sure current guidelines or you've forgotten something uh, or you're demonstrating it uh, uh, maybe to a student. If you click on there, it will actually tell you, um, give you a bit of information. As you can see, it's telling us a little bit about meter readings and how often we should do lab readings, etc. cetera, uh, and the difference between the two. So those. Uh, information boxes are handy. Uh, up here at the A1C, it's probably going to tell us the um, guidelines for how often we should do it and et cetera. So little bits of handy information uh, on these uh, information black dots here. So you can work down, I'll not go through every box, otherwise we will, could be here some time, but you can work uh, down through, add some comments as you go, for example, your thoughts about the glycemic control here at the uh, this level. The blood pressure has been automatically, uh, should have been automatically populated. Somehow it's got itself confused between uh, um, the uh, cholesterol and the blood pressure. But in your, uh, in a functional EMR, that would have automatically been um, put in if someone had added it uh, already. You can add it at this stage yourself by just clicking on opening up a green button and adding a new, if you checked it again, you could add under systolic your new one here. And then down here, you hit apply. Okay, that will change that. Because uh, this was added on the 8th. If, you, if you've checked it today and you want to add another number, you always click, click the green plus button to add a number. Scroll down from weight and height to diastolic. Let's put a more reasonable one in there. Up here. And then apply. And OK. And then here we have today's blood pressure numbers and height and weight from a couple of weeks ago. Pulse again, you will generally have to add that yourself. Uh, again, the plus button allows you to do that. And you can 
capture, whether it's regular or irregular, by just hitting, highlighting the one you wish. You may add some object, uh, some further examinations here, if you wish at, at your discretion, what you think is appropriate, heart and lung exam or whatever, into these boxes as you open the add comment, your cursor appears and you can free type uh, in there at your discretion. So uh, we'll move a bit further down. Um, then you have the opportunity here to ask about cardiovascular symptoms. Again, these information buttons gives you an idea of who you should be asking this for, who is at increased risk, um, if that's something that you're not familiar with. Uh, and diet and nutrition, some information is linked to that. Um, if you click on that, um, it's just giving you a little reminder there about salt and alcohol intake. Uh, and then further down, now we're getting to um, other vascular risk management smoking status. As you remember at the beginning, we added the patient smoking status on the lifestyle through the uh, QIP uh, smoking uh, drop down box. So that is auto populated. Now it's going to ask you this red box here is um, whether you've given them some smoking cessation advice. If this is red and you submit your CDM, you will uh, miss out a little bit on some payment there because you are overdue for asking the patient about their smoking habits and giving them advice. To um, if you discuss that with them and you're going to put, yep, yeah, we did some smoking advice today, smoking cessation advice, you can select on this calendar here for today's date, the 21st, and hit that. And as you see, that red box disappears. You've given them some smoking cessation advice on the 21st. We're going to put yes in this drop down box here. You can document it in free time if you wish, but that will also help you uh, gain that little bit extra on your. Uh, uh, um, payment for the, the um, CDM. Now, earlier I mentioned about getting your medical, your medications um, up to date and uh, because the computer can tell now, I had Ramipril as my ACE inhibitor on the um, uh, medication list history and the computer knows that. It's actually already uh, pre-populated that this patient is on an ACE. So, um, you can uh, add that yourself. Uh, if the box is blank, you would hit the drop down box and highlight the indicated continue taking. Um, if for whatever reason that changed, hit on that box again. So, for example, they didn't tolerate it or they refused to take it or they couldn't afford it, you've got options to click on that and change it to the appropriateness of that for that particular patient. But for as long as that ACE uh, inhibitor appears on the medication history in your EMR, it will auto populate that as being taken at the moment. Um, it would auto populate if the patient was on aspirin into here. Um, if not, you can choose a reason why, whether they do or they don't need an aspirin. And the nice thing about this box is because I can never remember who should and shouldn't take it is if you open this up, it gives you a, a really nice summary of the guidelines for those who, who you might consider aspirin for and for those who it's not necessary. Um, and you could read that in your own time. Medication adherence, this is a question about compliance. And as we're moving down, you'll see further auto-populated figures, the LDL, total, HDL, etc. We haven't added uh, these two in, so that's why those boxes are empty. But of course, that would automatically auto populate um, with your li the labs that you would get through your link for that patient. Um, um, this is the urine um, ACR. Now, this is how we normally, for some reason, this red box never seems to disappear off my screen. Um, but we do do this uh, annually or maybe more frequently for some patients. Uh, but this is also uh, where if you've done a creatinine, that would auto populate here and the EGFR has done. 
continuing to move down. And bear in mind, by now, I this has usually taken me only about four or five minutes to get to this point, unless the patient has a, a lot of questions at the beginning or something like that. But if if the patient really is um, just coming for their results and wants to go through labs and blood pressure, by now I'm usually only three or four minutes and it's so fast to, to get this information in. Um, we're moving on from nephropathy to eyes, questions about eye examinations, again, some information there for, for us if we need to refresh our memories about that. Uh, drop all these down boxes, a yes, no answers to, we're now on to uh, neuropathy, pain in the feet or not, yes or no gastric problems. Sometimes you have the option to put not asked if it wasn't relevant for that day um, and so on and so forth. Um, another huge red box here, very important foot examinations um, to get that little bit of extra payment. Um, let's assume we're doing that today. So we could click on the calendar here on the foot exam, click today's date. That will take that red box away. And then this underneath gives you the opportunity here to in what you found on the foot exam, whether you did your monofilament test, it was normal or not, your pulses, and then you could write in the add comment. Sorry, I'm going a little fast here. I'm so used to doing this so quickly. Um, in the add comment box here, if you open that, you could describe the feet there if you wish or if you need to or any issues. Screen depression and anxiety Some uh, uh, is also something that's uh, recommended it uh, uh, quite frequently. Here's the information that they suggest um, when you click on that little black information box to give you a information. So whether you've screened and some comments you might want to add into this free type add comment box. Pneumonia and flu vaccinations. Uh, we don't yet, I don't think, have the capacity for that to auto populate from your immunization um schedule that you may have added into the chart but it is quite simple to add it yourself if you want to select the date it was given for example a pneumovac you'll just put yes they've had it open the, that up you can change the dates pretty quickly say it was 2015 on the 1st of october um, and the same for flu and then now we're just wrapping up at the bottom uh patient goals here contraception if that's appropriate, uh, whether you're doing referrals here to educational programming or not. All these drop down boxes are fairly self-explanatory. You can put whether they've attended, whether they're being referred, um, et cetera. And then we're heading down to the very bottom for your comments usually here, your overall assessment and any plans for future management. There's a nice insulin prescription tool here, here as well. So lots of handy information in addition to uh, um, the actual flow sheet that's, that I find really helpful and certainly helpful for students, residents, etc., cetera, um, who are just starting out. Um, so that is a quite a quick overview of the flow sheet. Uh, once you had finished completing it, uh, down at the bottom right here, you'll you'll see save and close and review and close. So save and close just saves that to your compute to, to the obviously just to your EMR. So I'm just going to demonstrate saving and closing that first. And we're now back to our main screen that we probably all use. You'll see that it's it's there. But it's currently looking orange. Uh, that means that we haven't exported it uh, to QIP. Um, so, and I generally just save and close first, just in case you're still talking to the patient and you decide you want to go back and add something. You can open it up again. And then when you're absolutely certain you've finished everything, you maybe check through everything, you're actually going to review and close. And so when you reviewed and closed, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the sandbox isn't actually set up for export, but I, I see that you want to demonstrate the check mark. Sorry. Yes, it did. Uh, I uh, So it's just demonstrated it's changed from orange to green now, which indicates you have exported to uh, that to QIP. So I don't know, Nicole, do you think there's anything else I didn't mention there or something that you think would be? Um, 
level of adding to that? Do you think, I hope, probably didn't go too fast for everybody. You might, because we have a minute, you might want to show that you have a requisition ready for your diabetic patients, just to speed that process up when you're having your visits. Okay, uh, yes, so I, um, usually uh, you can auto-populate requisitions, for example, um, when you're looking for a form, I'm assuming most people, most of you using a Curo, use this right-hand box to put your la your um, forms in. Uh, and so here we have, um, uh, uh, I have a, um, a form on my computer that's highlighted here that will say lab diabetic bloods. So um, instead of having to uh, fill in all the individual dots uh, onto your, a new lab requisition, you, all you have to do is print, uh, is open this up and you will see that I've already uh, put in all the things that I want to do. You can obviously do it how you wish to do it um, and a standing order. So this allows you to just print that form off without having to take the extra time to fill in all the dots that you wish to have um, when a patient needs a new form and that can be a standing order for them. It's also available for your staff if someone just phones in and says, I've lost my form for my diabetic blood labs or I need a new one. They can actually go down and find that and print it off um, and give it to the patient uh, in anticipation for them doing their labs instead of having to bug you to print and fill in a new new form. So that's just a handy way of speeding things up. Um, uh, for printing out forms and things like that. Um, I think that anything else, Nicole, that you think I should add to that? I might just need a reminder myself. No, I, th I think you did a very thorough job. Thank you. I just find it it's so quick. Once you get used to using this flow sheet, I mean, um, it allows, in my opinion, time to spend more with the patient um because it only takes a few minutes to fill that form in i can see dr sterling has a go ahead you muted dr sperling hold on a second there you go yes excellent uh, talk um and I see that I'm not the only I can't, I'm here. sorry, I can't hear um, Dr. Spelling. I can just vaguely hear some. I, I'm using my iPad, so that might be the reason. I heard you then, uh, Dr. Spelling, as you leant forward. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Dr. Sanderson. Um, I'm the only doctor on here, and yet my whole team is on here. Uh, I'm moving my practice, and Esther Park, Janelle Hanlon, and Nian King, Mercurial. I'm still struggling to hear you. Sorry. Um, yes, I'm moving my practice, and uh, notice that Esther Park, Jill Hanot, and Leanne King are on here, and they're my three uh, helpers for my move. They've been very good. I only heard a second. Can anybody else hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can hear you. I think uh, Dr. Sanderson is just having uh, some issues with her speakers, but. Um, I, I was wondering. Uh, I'm doing. We, we might have to we might have to relay <laughs> relay to Dr. Sanderson, but go ahead, Dr. Sperling. Yes. Well, um, I, I I have a confession. I I don't uh, use the TDM forms much. Um, I, I actually end up, you know, spending half an hour with my diabetics and blood pressure patients and so on, and bill a different way, often counseling and so on. So I go through all those things, but don't get the payment for it. So I'm, I'm really interested now in doing the CDM forms and going further and doing the QIP as well. Um, so uh, normally I don't have lots of questions, but because this is new to me, I, I have quite a few questions. So I'm wondering if you could put it back to the uh, diabetic um, CDM form, so I could just look through it and remind myself what questions I had. Did you catch that, Dr. Sanderson? Maybe you're not yeah. yeah, seeing having some some issues on Dr. Sanderson's end. Um, it, Dr. Sperling was just asking to uh, to move back to the di diabetic CDM form. If you could do that. 
So yes, we uh, on on the top of the box here. So we got to drop down, and we're going to go right to the bottom of the right hand screen under CDM worksheets, uh, and you should find them right at the bottom on on your Acura at the very bottom. Um, and we open up the diabetic. We're, we're doing just the diabetic one. I'm, I'm just wondering um, when it auto populates the lab work, the A1C, the urine, um, the cholesterol stuff, and so on. Can you look quickly at what the previous lab works were? Um, oh, there, I see previous value. That's the first time I saw that. Last time there wasn't that pinky purple thing there. It kind of shows what was what was mentioned last time. Once you have. Um, a worksheet completed and you open a new one, you can see up to the last three worksheets completed within the patient's chart in this view. Excellent, because that's the change is often the most important thing. Um, I, su I suppose the hypoglycemic episodes, if they've gone from occasional to none, you then would have to correct that, I, I guess. Um, and if they've started, if they've stopped smoking, you would change their smoking status. Um, so I can figure all that out. Um, also, uh, what else do I have? Uh, yeah. Are, are they going to be doing the ICD 10 sometime in a cure, or is that a whole province thing that we're still using ICD 9 code? That might not be the question for this panel. I can take a stab at that. Um, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. I didn't hear any of that. That's okay. Dr. Sperling was asking if at some point, um, Akira is going to start using the ICD, ICD 10 codes versus ICD 9 for Saskatchewan. Oh. Our billing system is based off of ICD 9 codes. And that's why yep. of Akira are built that way. I see. I don't know the answer to that question. I have to admit, and, uh, uh, I'm, oh, I don't know why we're so behind with that. <laughs> Yeah. And with the ICD at nine, um, there was a, especially if you spent like 30, 40, 50 minutes with someone, instead of getting a $35 5B, you could uh, uh, bill at counseling. And there was a, a code called um, lifestyle change or lifestyle improvement or, or something like that. But I, whenever I search for something like that, lifestyle uh, counseling or um, prevention counseling, it doesn't come up anymore. I'm wondering if that's sort of been taken out of the uh, Saskatchewan ICD-9, or am I just missing it? I think even in the payment schedule, there used to be a code for prevention and education. I think it was a, a 51B or something. Nobody knows that? That's what did, I'm did you catch any of that, Dr. Simpson? No, I'm no. sorry. I can't hear it. <laughs> I wonder if we'd be better served, Dr. Sanders, Dr. Sperling, if you um, if you actually could just write your questions. Um, I can hear you, Andrew, and I can hear Nicole, but unfortunately, I just hear I can hear Dr. Sperling is talking, but I can't make out what he's saying. <laughs> so, Dr. Sanderson, Dr. Sperling was saying that it, historically there was a code fifty one B to use for counseling. And um, he doesn't see that anymore, but I'm, I'm wondering, Dr. Sperling, um, if you use these worksheets, yes. you can bill a, a 64B, so a different base code for uh, CD, chronic disease management. And then if it was diabetes, then you would be able to add on from that. So it's, yeah. it's higher payment than billing a 5B for a follow-up. Is that what you mean? Um, kind of, but I think I was really thinking, just for, I was just curious because there used to be a, a prevention or lifestyle diagnostic code in the ICD-9, but whenever I search it, it doesn't come up, or if it comes up, it doesn't sort of, I can't use it. Uh, they just seem to be away from that. I, I was just wondering if you knew- Andrew, that. maybe we but could take that away? Yeah, yeah, sorry about asking that question. It's probably yeah. pertinent to this thing. What, what I was gonna ask though is, um, not, not that I'm gonna do the minimum, I think I'm actually gonna take quite pride in, in doing this from now on. So I do have a lot of older people, but is is it the red areas in which you have to do to get paid and the other ones are just um, extra, which is still important? 
Um, it's, it's Nicole. Is it okay if I answer that? Uh, yes, I, I think he's asking about code and billing. I, can, I may be able to help a wee bit with that. I can. Uh, so right now the question is with respect to the key indicators that have to be populated and exported. So Dr. Sanderson did indicate that some of those ones that you saw highlighted in red, those mm -hmm. are indicating that they're overdue for collection. However, I do want to caution you that that's not the only ones that are required for the QIP program for the $75 bonus payment. Okay. For instance, for diabetes, there are 10 key measures, and absolutely, um, Esther, as your practice advisor, would be able to provide you with um, lists of the key indicators for each of the chronic conditions for the QIP program. But the red ones are indicating that they're overdue for collection, but it's not indicating each and every one of the key indicators that are required for export to satisfy the QIP requirements. Oh, These were built. Um, the the CSEG, the clinical expert group that developed them, didn't didn't want to necessarily flag or highlight each of the key indicators that are a requirement of the program. But those ones that you saw previously highlighted in red were indicating they were overdue for collection. But it wasn't all one of the indicators for diabetes. Does that help? That helps a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. So we also have. Um... A couple, uh, a couple people from QHR on, on the call, Alicia and Leanne, and I, I know that they're, um, uh, they're willing to take some of these uh, questions away too, Dr. Sperling, and follow up with you. Sure, and I think once I get my form going, I'll probably have more questions, or maybe I'll, I'll be able to figure it out, and I'll talk to Esther about this key, uh, ten key indicators. Um, are they the same for getting the code sixty four B, sixty five B? And the QIP, or is the or what you do different for the uh, the fees for the CDM versus the fee for the QIP, or is it the same ten? Each each of the chronic conditions has different key indicators that are required for export. Okay. And and Esther can help you because there's configuration in your EMR that is required before you're set up for the exporting. And before you'll even see the appropriate worksheets within the EMR, and then Esther will be able to support you through that process, Dr. Sperling. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so, Dr. Sperling, if you have any other questions about this um, that haven't been answered, if you want to do any uh, any follow ups, um, just feel free to, to contact. I'm not sure if you've been talking more to Esther or to Jill, but if you um, if you want to pass your questions along to, to one of us anyway, we can, can always get in touch with Dr. Sanderson and, and have a little more discussion. Okay, thanks. Okay, lot. Were there any other questions? Uh, I think I think Dr. Sperling is, uh, they might be the only physician on the, on the call at the moment, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll be going through it and then maybe I'll have some more questions, but it's, uh, it's kind of an exciting new thing. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, if there uh, if there's no more questions, um, I think we can wrap up then. Uh, Andrew, would you like to do the export activity report for for? Um... I'm sorry. Would you like me to show the export activity report? Sure, that would be great. Okay, so can you change the presenter over to me and um, then Dr. Sanderson doesn't have to worry about that. Okay, you're the presenter now, Nicole. Thank you. Let me know when you can see my version of Akira. Yeah. Okay. So the export activity report um, is available um, in your EMR once you're set up for exporting. If you want the access um, for one of your administrators, perhaps to monitor this, and in Dr. Sanderson's clinic, it is one of the administrators who just is going to keep an eye on this export activity report, and it's. Um, very simple to set up, but the way that you access it is you go to the red start button and then we go to reports and then the CDMQIP worksheet, worksheet export activity report. 
and mine opens up on a separate window, so I'll have to drag it over here for you. All right, and then in um, the performing provider, so uh, this is a sandbox, so we're not actually set up um, properly for it, but I, I did get a copy of Dr. Sanderson's that I'll show you, but this is, it's very simple to run. So you would pick the provider in the drop down box and then put in your range of dates. So it's recommended that, you know, perhaps the um, administrator take a peek at this report every week or two, just to make sure that we're seeing a status of processed on all the worksheets. If we see status of a fail, there would be a message down here in the message content section. I, I recommend that you just call your practice advisor for assistance if and when you ever do see that. We see very few failed reports right now. What you might see is a report sitting there in an unprocessed status. The exports happen every 15 to 20 minutes throughout the day. So if you if you just finished a worksheet and went and took a look at this report, you would see it sitting in an unprocessed status. If you saw it sitting there for six, seven hours, then we would probably have to reach out to Akira for assistance. But typically you're looking to see everything in a process status. And I'm just going to share a different screen now so that you can actually see what that would look like. Are you seeing um, this report team? Yeah. Okay, so then when we scroll down here, uh, I know it's very tiny, but this is what the report would um, look like. For So, this is Dr. Sanderson's exports for the month of September. We put in a 30 day window there and it goes through the date and time and that she was the provider. And then it would show you the patient name and um, which worksheet was exported. And we see they're all in a process status. So then we're good to go. Okay. So it's, it's a great tool just to make sure that your exports are happening as you would expect them to. Okay. That too is something that, you know, our, our team could provide you additional support or training on when the time comes. Good. That was all I had, Andrew. Okay, thanks, Nicole. Uh, if there's uh, no other questions or comments, I think we can wrap up then. Thanks a lot, Dr. Sanderson. This has been great. I think it's been very useful. I think it'll be really useful to have the recording uh, for later on our website. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sanderson. I will follow up with you. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Dr. Spelling, for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Dr. Sanderson. Bye. Dr. Sanderson. Oh, Dr. Spelling. Dr. Sanderson, do you work at the Lions Clinic in Moose Uh No, Medela Medical Clinic. Oh, uh, okay. my, my, I share it with Dr. Marks and Dr. Heddington, our own little clinic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm moving from a solar practice to the Lions, Lions Health in Saskatoon. Moving to, I didn't quite hear. I'm going solo to go into a Lions Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Alliance Saskatoon, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Andrew. Bye.